Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 28 of my fitness database series. If you haven't watched parts one through 27, go watch those first, then come on back. And as I say at the start of every video, this isn't just about fitness, folks. We're building a cool database, lots of new tips and tricks and techniques, so have fun. Here we go. All right, moving right along. Um, what I did in the extended cut with the members was we made a copy of the day button. So if you've got, let's say here, today's date is uh, the 12th. So this is today. And let's say we go to, uh, well, let's say we want to copy this to tomorrow, right? So hit copy day and it'll default to tomorrow's date, the 13th. Hit OK. Boom. And it copies those records. It copied three records to the next day. See? Nice and easy. Now, and that's handy if you got like, like I said last time, if you got like, you know, the same meal that you eat on a regular basis. I have the same like schedule. I have the same breakfast, the same lunch, the same dinner, the same late night snack, like four nights a week. <laughs> With some, some variation in the flavors and stuff like the cereal flavor and, you know, but it's basically the yogurt, a different flavor every night, but it's basically the same nutritionally, the same stuff. Okay. Today we're gonna to make our delete, requery, and add new button since we got rid of any way that the user can delete records out of here. So fortunately we already have some buttons built. We can just copy them. I'm gonna slide this up a little bit because we don't really need that big of a notes field for a food log item. And let's just grab them from the meal form here. We'll go to design view. We'll come down here. We'll copy these three buttons. Click over here, paste them. And then we're gonna drag them down here. Try to keep our forms a little consistent, right? All right, right there. I'll put the copy day button next to those ones. Probably make you a little bit smaller. Oop. So do that and then that. And then select, right click, size to grid. Now everybody looks happy. Okay. Requery is the easiest one. I think for this guy, a standard me.requery will work. There's nothing fancy that has to go on in here. So that one's good. That's the easy one. Now for delete, uh, we don't get any child records. We can basically borrow the code from this delete button and just tweak it a little bit. We don't need the second uh, SQL statement in there. So I'm gonna copy this stuff, copy. And you can switch back to the other form by just doing this, watch. Just close this right here, this, this bottom X, boop, and it brings you back to the last module you were in, which is the food log. Doesn't really help me much because I still want to go into here and right click on the button so I get the right build event build for me. Burp, there we go. And we'll paste that in. Okay. Now we are on the food log. So this is food log ID. I don't think for the food log we really need an are you sure? Leave it in there if you want to. I'm going to rim it out. If I decide later I want to add it, it's sitting right there. Okay. Me.30 is false is the same thing. We only need one of these SQL statements because there's no child records. We're going to delete from meal, or excuse me, food log T where food log ID equals food log ID. DB fail on error is good. When we're done, a me.record set requery is good and we just need to set the focus. We don't need to requery this as that second list. We just, let's set the focus to where we want to be, assuming they're going to add another record or whatever. Um, I don't want to set the focus on the date because in a minute, we're going to add that date automatically as soon as they start typing in some values. I'm going to put them in the meal block. You can put them in description if you want to. Let's put them in meal description. All right, so when they delete something, that's where they're going to be sitting. Okay, let's debug compile, check it out. Debug compile once in a while, I know, I know. Leave this guy open for now. All right, and then let's just add something bogus down here and another one, and then we'll delete them now. Delete. Okay, and it's gonna resort them and this guy has no value. We're gonna get to that in a second. And then delete. Okay, all right, working good. The add new button's gonna be pretty straightforward. That's literally just put the focus here on a new record, right? So build event. This is going to be me.recordset.addNew. And then same thing, meal description dot set focus. All right, just put you down there. So you're all ready to add a new item. All right, add new, boop, ready to type. Okay, now here's the thing. I don't want to have to come over here and put today's time, you know, the time in is uh, 12 p.m. and then blah, blah, blah. I want that to go in there for me automatically. All right, as soon as I start typing here. 
you don't want to use a default value. There's a couple reasons why I don't like the default values for timestamps. First of all, um, that default value gets set when the form opens. Let me show you something in my, uh, my, my tech help free template here. Let's go to the customer table and let's just put a, uh, a date added. Okay. And we'll make this a date value and we'll put the default value equals now. Okay. Now in the customer form, I'm going to add that in here real quick. Form design, add existing fields, date added. We'll just stick it down here on the bottom. Okay. And I want to see the whole thing. So make sure the format is, what are we going to do in here? Let's do, uh, let's do general date. Okay. Save it, close it, close it. Now, if I go to a new record, there's that date value. Now notice it's 12, 13, 41 AM. Yes, I'm recording late today. Um, if I just sit here, let's say I go to lunch, right? With this new, with this new record open, come back from lunch. And now I start typing in a new record. That's the default value that I'm assigned. Whenever the value, whatever the value was in there, when the form opened. Okay. So if you've got a situation here where you've got a log, let's say you leave this thing running all day long, which sometimes I do. I have a to-do list, to list database that I leave running all the time. So I can see what I got to do. And if there's a default value sitting in there and now you start typing in my lunch, right? But you got that default value from when you open the database after you put your breakfast in, the new record was maybe added at 10 a.m. It's wrong, right? This value here is technically wrong. It's not when I started adding this. So we're going to do something different instead. Let me get rid of this, close this. Okay, we're going to use the before insert event. We're going to leave this blank. Okay, and then when they start entering in a new record, we will at that moment set that date. Okay, so what we're going to do is, let's delete that one. And this will work whether they use the add new button or not. You don't want to set it in the add new button either, because if you set it in the add new button, then it's going to put that date in there. And you get that situation where you hit add new, your code puts this in here. And now you're sitting, oh, yeah, 530. Ugh. Ah, ah, I hit print screen. 5.30 p.m., right? Now you're sitting here and you realize, oh, I didn't want to make that record. And now you got a blank record sitting in there, which you now have to go in manually delete. So I don't like that either. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come into the forms properties. I'm going to find the before insert event. This happens when you start typing in a value in, when you start typing a value into a new record in a form. Okay, now, just in case the user happens to be typing in that food uh, time, the food time text, we don't want to mess with it then. Let them type in what they typed in. So if is null food time text, then do this stuff. And what's the stuff? Well, we're going to set it. Food time text equals the time value of right now. But then we have to run that code that sets it into the table, which is in the after update event of the food time text. Now you can just call it here if you want to food time text underscore after update. And that will run that same code, but I don't like doing that. So I'm going to take this guy definition and we're going to make this guy its own subroutine. So right in here, we'll call this update food date time and the sub right and then we'll just copy this name private sub update food date time and now we'll shift f2 no control shift f2 to go back to the code we were at before control shift f2 a couple times that'll bring it back up here it, it it goes backwards through the last places you were in the code editor Control shift F2. I don't, I don't, I don't think I mentioned, have I mentioned that in the class? I got so many videos. I don't remember what I've mentioned anymore. I'm going to need to program AI to say, Hey, have I mentioned this in any of my previous classes? Paste that in there. Okay. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Close it. Close it. Close it. We can close this now. All right. Now that code should work. Even if I just come in here and start typing in lunch. Boom. Look at that. It immediately puts the code in there, or the, the time in there for you and updates it. Same. All right, let's delete that. 
Let me try putting an actual time in here, 1 p.m. And it kept it, and it didn't run that code because we're putting in the time ourselves. See, lunch, whatever. Next record, dinner, there's my time, see? Isn't that cool? I like that. I prefer using the after or the before insert event to put times in there like that. I think it just works better. Default values are easy for beginners, but as you've seen, depending on the use case, it, it, that default value gets assigned when, the, when you first go to the record or when the form loads. It's not necessarily when you start making that entry. Most of the time, it's not a big deal, but in certain circumstances like this, you could see how it'd be important. Like if you just put in your lunch and you left this form open, then you came back here later and you typed in blah, you'd get that default value. All right, so delete works. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, the, the requery is gonna resort these, which I kind of like that. So it puts them in chronological order, right? That's kind of a good thing. Add new works, requery works, everything's working. All right, so in, unless I come up with some other weird things that I decide I want to add to this, tomorrow's video, part 29, we're going to start actually making, we're going to make two combo boxes right here, a, a meal. Actually, we're going to do, yeah, we'll do a meal combo box and a food combo box and maybe a food group combo box too. So you can do, you can pick the group, pick the food item, or just pick a meal. Might do three combo boxes. Then you can decide, you hit the button, you add it, and it'll put it up here. If it's a single food item, it'll put the food item in here for you and the, and the macros. If you do a meal, it'll put all of them in there. We'll have to do a little record set loop. Okay, but that, that's, we'll, that, that's not going to be hard. We're going to start doing that in tomorrow's video. So that's it for part 28. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part 29. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.